At this moment, I have the distinct pleasure to bring up a gentleman that I met not long ago, a doctor and ambassador. He served almost five lifetimes of service to the, to the international community and certainly as a global citizen, Dr. Thomas Patrick Milady. He has held four diplomatic posts, the U.S. Ambassador to Burundi, the Senior Advisor to the Delegation of the U.N. General Assembly, the U.S. Ambassador to Uganda, and the U.S. Ambassador to the Holy See. He served as the President of Sacred Heart University and is now the President Emeritus and Professor Emeritus of Political Science. He previously was also the Executive Vice President at St. Joseph University and as well a Professor of the African Asian Affairs at Seton Hall University. His work and list of, of what he has done and accomplishments goes on page after page. Uh, and I'll uh, wrap up with he was also the visiting professor at the George Washington University. And Dr. Milady is certainly someone that is an authority on the sub-Saharan African and Balkan affairs. He's authored 16 books and numerous articles. I encourage every one of you to spend time with Dr. Thomas Milady. He's a really wonderful global citizen. I'd ask him to come up this evening. Thank you very much. For me, I have a particularly a great honor, an honor and privilege for me to introduce His Eminence Donald Connell Whirl, Archbishop of Washington. Since its elevation to the status of an archdiocese, Washington has been blessed with several fine and wonderful shepherds. In all cases, they were elevated to the College of Cardinals, as Archbishop World was in 2010. Writer and teacher, he came to us with a tremendous reputation from his service first on the West Coast as Auxiliary Bishop of Seattle, followed by a period of service in Rome with Connell Wright. If I can add a personal note, that's when I had the honor of meeting him, who was the perfect, the prefect of the Congregation for the Clergy, and then a long tour of duty as Bishop of Pittsburgh, which was his hometown. He is also the author of numerous articles and books, including the best-selling catechism, The Teaching of Christ and the Catholic Way. Despite his many responsibilities with the governance of the church in Rome, he has been a steady and beloved presence for us in Washington. Reverend clergy, ladies and gentlemen, His Eminence, Donald Connell Whirl, Archbishop of Washington. the award of the National Museum of Catholic Art and Library. We did it as a book for a library, and we'd like to present that to you. Christina. Okay. Okay. Can we hold this? I think so. Can we can. take a photo? Can we can. We also have um, another uh, gift for you. If Dean Marie Smith would come up. Your Eminence, one, thank you very much for being such a gracious host. Congratulations on coming here. Uh, as you know, we love, I love all of my football players in the National Football League. Um, thank you for agreeing to resolve the referee situation. I know <laughs> you, um, you haven't announced that. I'm, I'm happy to announce that right now. Uh, but one of our more exciting players in the National Football League is a young man named Robert Griffin III. Uh, who is not only a tremendous man, but has brought back uh, an excitement in Washington that I haven't seen since I was a, a young boy. 
On behalf of the players of the National Football League, I wanted to give you a ball that he signed for you. And wonderful. Thank you for Thank being you such a me. great fan. Thank you very, Thank very you. much. Wonderful. Christina, thank you. Thank you so very, very much. And Mr. Ambassador, thank you for those very, very gracious words of, of introduction. Demaray, thank you for the, the football, but also for reminding us we live in hope. <laughs> this is a wonderful evening, and I want to recognize so many distinguished guests here. Uh, Ambassador Diaz, so many, many who are here simply to show their great support for the wonderful gift that is art, religious art. Uh, on, on the flight yesterday, coming back from the West Coast, there was a man seated next to me, and as we began our conversation, he started by saying, do you know St. Matthew's Cathedral. And I said, yes, I do. Uh, he said, if you, if you haven't been there, you should go. <laughs> and I said, what, aside from the wonderful homilies, what attracts you to the cathedral? And he said, it is so beautiful. It is so beautiful. And he made reference to all of the artwork around the cathedral. I said to him, without using your name, I said, I'm going to quote you tomorrow because I'm going to be with people who not only love and appreciate great art, but with those who produce great art, as we can see in these wonderful paintings of the saints who will be declared saints canonized this coming month. But then it made me think, that conversation made me think of, of my early, early days in Washington as a student. And making my way down to the National Gallery just to be able to see some of these extraordinary pieces of art and history. And the more I looked at it, the more I became aware that Western civilization and the church and our faith are simply woven together. When we look at the artwork here tonight, it reflects the lives of people serving in various parts of the world, all united in one faith, in one love of God. So much of the beauty, so much of the wonder, so much of the mystery of the art of our culture is caught up in the wonder and the mystery of faith. And then, and then I let my thoughts travel to the days when I worked in Rome. And Ambassador Milady was kind enough to mention that's where I first had the honor of meeting him during those, those wonderful days when I worked in Rome. And there I learned that you don't have to go to a museum to see extraordinary art. All you have to do is walk down any of the streets, go into any of the churches, enter any of the buildings, and you're bathed in the beauty, the culture, the history. And all of it, all of it brings us back to our reflection on who we are, our relationship to God, and the challenge of simply trying to live to live out everything that our aspirations call us to be. And so I need to say a great heartfelt word of appreciation to Christina. Thank you for this great honor this evening. Thank you for the opportunity to be here with so many wonderful people and simply to say how important is a museum of art, of religious art, of Catholic art, very, very, because it simply makes available to the next generation everything that we cherish 
and everything that's been handed down generation after generation, going all the way back to the magnificence that is the art in all of our history. Thank you, God bless you, and enjoy the evening.